Never done a diatribe on this show before. You know, we've done duo tribes, and now that Eli's on the show, we'll have to think of something else to call those. But 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 I still need to sound off, you know. Wrote some shit down on the night of the election, trying to collect my thoughts and put my anger into legible sentences, and that became last week's scathing atheist diatribe. But now that I've had time to get over the numbness a bit, I, I have a lot more to say. You know, obviously the big question on the minds of rational Americans now is, what the fuck happened? And, and, and look, that's not a backwards-looking question. If the American meritocracy is so fucked up that a meritless, bullying pervert can rise to the top of it, this is a pretty essential question to sort out. And everyone's trying to do exactly that right now. As it turns out, by the way, the real culprit is whatever was most pissing off the person that you're talking to right before the election. Turns out that that's the real problem. But, you know, look, j just because by and large people are playing the blame game wrong, that doesn't mean that it's a pointless game, you know, because there are groups of people to blame and we need to figure out who the fuck they are. We need to figure out who they are, why they fucked up things and how we can keep them from doing that again. So uh, let me start with me. Right. I was a Hillary supporter from the start. In my assessment, she was the most qualified candidate that had tossed their hat in the ring, and I, I still think she would have made a pretty solid president. I figured Obama got a few good things going, and the country needed a nice, boring bureaucrat like Hillary to take care of uh, a few of the changes that he'd initiated. You'll see him through that next stage. I figured we needed somebody moderate enough not to scare away to center-right, somebody who had been thoroughly vetted by the national opposition, and somebody with a strong record on realistic progressive policies, and she had all of those things. And when the Bernie supporters told me to go fuck myself with my old school politics as usual establishment choice, I ignored them. I gave my preferred candidate a lukewarm defense, but if they were really persistent, I would eventually just give up. I didn't take the threat of a Donald Trump presidency seriously enough to believe that it really mattered that I convinced those people. I had a platform that I could have been using to shout about this shit for months now, and all I really did was make fun of like the pussy grabbing type shit. But in retrospect... I owe the Bernie crowd an apology, and this is it, right? I mean, you guys warned me that Hillary was too boring to inspire young people to the polls, and you were right. You know, I, I agreed. I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't think it was going to be so critically important, but I agreed that you were right. And I know a lot of my fellow Hillary supporters are loath to admit this at this point, but we should have listened. Because whatever you think of Bernie, you have to admit he could have upped the turnout in some key demographics, particularly young people. I still think Hillary would have made a better president than Bernie, and we can argue about that all you want. But I think we can all agree that either of them would be orders of magnitude better than President-elect Trump. So that's my apology to Bernie supporters. I should have taken you and your concerns more seriously. But that's also where I draw the line. Because I've seen a ton of Bernie supporters trying to absolve themselves from any post-election guilt with prognostications about how much better their candidate would have done in the general. Look, guys, gals, slow down. Right? We can all agree that he likely would have driven a lot more young voters to the polls, but that does not an election make. Who the hell knows what they'd have dug up on him, what would have stuck? You know, he has not been nationally vetted. Who the hell knows how many frightened Americans would run to the polls to vote against the socialist? Sure, he would have captured some of the Trump anti-establishment vote, but to put that forward as proof that he would have won the general election is silly. And don't come to me with a bunch of polls showing how much better he'd have done in Wisconsin or whatever. Those same pollsters were showing Hillary winning handily the night before, remember? You know, we've seen the man run one national campaign and he lost to a lady that couldn't even beat Donald Trump. I'm not saying that he couldn't have won, but if you have no doubt that Bernie would have won, you're doubting wrong and you should know better. You know, every time we have a presidential election, we go through this shit. The party that lost has a fight over whether they should have gone further towards their base or tried harder to appeal to the middle. But at the moment, it's not about whether we should move further to the left or further to the center so much as we need to move closer together. So step one here is we need to get over this if everybody had just listened to me shit. The Hillary supporters should have taken the Bernie supporters more seriously, you know, should have addressed their concerns more. She should have thrown them a bone with her VP choice, maybe. And we, the Hillary supporters, should have done a lot more to try to win the Bernie supporters over to our side. Not just convince them she wasn't Donald Trump, mind you, but give them a reason to get excited. And at the same time, the Bernie supporters should have taken this situation more seriously. You know, I know a lot of you fell in line and you held your nose and you voted for Hillary, but that clearly wasn't enough. 
You know, when you saw what we were up against, it was your civic duty to get behind your candidate with full-throated support. Like it or not, the presidential election gives you a binary choice. That's the system we have. You may not like Hillary Clinton, but she was the only one on that ballot that represented LGBT rights or women's rights or the rights of immigrants or religious freedom or basic human decency. She was the representative of those causes. And whatever you think of her, you owed it to your democracy to get excited about those causes. I mean, I'm not trying to give you too much shit. I'm just suggesting you're probably guilty of the same crime I'm guilty of, right? You didn't take the threat seriously enough. And if you thought it would be enough to show up at the polls, mutter something under your breath about how much better we can do and cast your reluctant, apathetic vote, you were wrong. You didn't see yourself in there voting for continued steps towards LGBT equality or social progress or affordable health care. You saw yourself in there voting for Hillary Clinton. So, um, you know what, you get off with a couple of Hail Marys or a few minutes in time out or whatever. But then there are those others of you, those who did not vote for Hillary, folks who didn't bother to vote at all or pissed away their civic duty on some impotent dick waving protest vote. You know, they, they pouted their way through the election like a starving man turning away a sandwich because he wanted the crusts cut off. They said they're justifying their civil ineptitude by acting like it's the job of some candidate to inspire them to bear the minimal fucking responsibility of driving across town and pushing a fucking button. I'm sorry nobody told you this last month, but the simple fact that you want your gay friends to keep their rights is supposed to be enough to inspire you to do that. The simple fact that you don't want your country run by a guy who thinks global warming is a myth is supposed to do the trick here. The fact that you've been entrusted with the care of the world's oldest semi-functional democracy is supposed to be all the inspiration that you need to go to the goddamn polls and vote for the person who isn't Donald goddamn fucking Trump. I mean, quit bitching about the government, people. You are the government. Yes, it's an imperfect democracy, sure, but how can you justify bitching about its imperfections if you're not doing your fucking job in the first place? A democracy sure as hell can't be better than the voters that actually show up to the polls, can it? You know, I can't tell you how many people justify their laziness to me by telling me how blue or red their state is. Oh, I'm sorry, was your state only electing the president on Tuesday? Was that the only fucking race on the ballot and new go fuck yourself? Look, I agree. Our democracy is clearly broken and a lot of people have a lot of good ideas on how to fix it. But none of those ideas matter if we're not going to do our duty as voters. And part of that duty is showing up to vote. I mean, that's the absolute minimal amount of responsibility. If you actually want to fix shit, you have to start voting in primaries, you know, voting in local elections, donating your time and money to congressional candidates that you like, following the national and local news, seeking out objective sources on ballot initiatives, and engaging the friends you disagree with politically. Now, if that sounds like too much trouble, don't worry, there is another way. You can master a couple of phrases like the whole system is rigged and vote them all out. And then you can cling to those like a Christian chanting the mysterious ways mantra. You can stay at home bitching on Facebook about how your needs aren't being taken seriously while continuously reiterating the message that you're sending to the politicians that you don't matter. Look, we're bad at democracy. My generation, the one before me, the one after me, we like to protest. That's what we want to do. That makes us feel engaged. It's fun. And in some instances, it also really accomplishes super important shit. But in all of those instances, right, the actual change, the sausage making that winds up with the country that we're happier with happens in boring fucking meetings with arcane rules and ostentatious titles. Uh, uh, Bruce Carlson from the My History Can Beat Up Your Politics podcast called politics the boring stuff that happens instead of war. And I don't know that a better definition has ever been offered. But boring is right at the heart of politics. It's a necessary component. If you've ever been to a city council meeting or a legislative session, you'll know the only time it isn't boring is when it isn't working. You know, even going to vote is often an arduous and time-consuming experience. So, you know, you could read up on energy policy and write letters to your congressman, or you could go to a big pipeline protest. The honest truth is that the former is probably going to accomplish more But it's going to be boring as hell and you won't get any cool pictures. And from the baby boom on, that's where we seem to think that our political efforts are best spent. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that protest is useless or that we shouldn't protest. 
You know, when they're done right and organized around a coherent cause, organized protests are the most powerful democratic weapon we have at our disposal. So if we want real change, we do need people who are willing to show up in the street and be counted. We do need people ready to give these impassioned speeches. We do need the fun shit to still happen. But that is just the tip of the iceberg of lasting, meaningful political change. And, and we also have to tend to all the other iceberg shit if we want to make it stick. You know, if we're only active as long as we're outraged, the powers that be know that all they have to do is placate us for a week and then distract us with something else. So look, if you're feeling like I am this week, if you're feeling angry and impotent and ashamed of your country, if you feel like going back in time to tell the founding fathers that they're overestimating us, I have a suggestion. Write down how you're feeling right now, you know, or, or, or say it into a voice recorder or take a picture, whatever, whatever you have to do to hold on to this memory, this feeling right now. And then go out there and take back your fucking democracy. Whatever you're doing now, ramp it up. If you only vote in the presidential elections, start voting in the midterms. If you don't know who your congressperson is, find out. If you've never written to him, write to him. If you've never gone to a city council meeting, go to one. If you've never considered running for office, maybe change your mind. We've never needed you more. You know, donate your time and your money and your rage. And whenever it gets boring and seems pointless, try to come back to right now. Try to live in this feeling for a little while so you'll remember what it feels like when you leave this kind of shit, shit this important, to everybody else.